Well, hello. It's me. It's you. We're here for another little bit of Garth Nix Drowned Wednesday. Book three of the Keys to the Kingdom series, no less. We're really getting into the thick of things now, aren't we? Oh my goodness. So, um... Yeah, if you remember, we saw that Leaf was on board the ship, wasn't she? And then, all of a sudden, Feverfew was talking to Arthur. Oh, how? I don't know, but he is a very powerful sorcerer. So, we'll pick it up from there. Now, tonight, <coughs> excuse me, we're up to chapter 19, but I'm only going to give you half a chapter tonight. I'm, a, I'm super late for my upload tonight, so I apologies. But I'm only going to give you half a chapter tonight. I'll stop it at a sensible place, you know. Don't feel shortchanged or anything. But um, just so you know, it'll be a quickie tonight. All right. Here we go. <clears throat> Arthur tried to look away, but an unseen force gripped his head, keeping him staring at the mirror. You will come to me. I've forgotten the voice I used the other night. Ordered the voice in the light. It was little more than a whisper, but it echoed in Arthur's mind. Reach through the mirror with your red, splashed hand. Gosh, I sound more like Dracula. Arthur's fingers twitched. He felt them slide across the surface of the mirror. What? Without his control, his whole hand preparing to plunge through the silvered glass. At the same time, through squinting eyes, he saw a face emerge from the light. A shriveled face that looked like an ancient bog corpse that had been burned. You have stolen from fever few. <laughs> Gosh, I don't know where we're going with this. Now you must make reparations, <laughs> whispered the face, which Arthur knew was dread. With dread was fever few's own, sorcery ravaged and twisted by nothing. Reach through the mirror. <laughs> no, Arthur screamed. He couldn't shut his eyes, but he managed to turn his head, dislodging the shell. Still, Feverfew's voice remained whispering inside his skull. Reparations. Reach through the mirror. <laughs> Reach through the mirror. There was a sharp pain in Arthur's head and the voice vanished. Arthur blinked several times and just managed to raise his hands in time to stop Watkingle from hitting him for the second time with the pommel of his cutlass. No, don't! Ow! I'm all right! Watkingle lowered the cutlass. I wasn't sure I'd hit hard enough, he said. Thought I'd start with a little tap, like on the table, for ordering a drink. Thanks, muttered Arthur, feeling the sore spot on the top of his head. He felt a small wash of nausea pass over him and gulped. Seasickness, he figured. You were screaming softly, said Watkingle. Fair gave me the shudders. Me too, replied Arthur. He looked up and he sat up and looked around, ignoring a momentary attack of dizziness. The mirror was lying on the floor, a huge crack running across it. The shell was crushed under his foot. A fixed gaslight burned in the corner of the cabin and there was no longer any sunshine coming through the porthole. The ship was vibrating with a low, regular hum and he could hear a distant sound like someone hitting a punch bag, not in time with the slight roll and pitch of the ship. How long was I looking in a mirror? From four bells in the afternoon watch to six bells of the first. Nine hours, more or less. Seemed like minutes. I guess they were a long way out in the secondary realms. I wonder where... Arthur's head throbbed and his throat was sore, probably from the soft screaming Watkingle had described. He shivered again as he thought of Feverfew's horribly burned face and his whispering voice. Don't think about Feverfew, he told himself. Think about what must be done. The flying mantis was about to be attacked by the shiver, Arthur said aloud, still thinking to himself. The mantis? That'd be a rare fight. She's a regular ship. Pirates don't normally go for the regulars. They might win, but they'd get mighty cut up. Feverfew's already taken the moth, and now he's gone for the mantis. I wonder if... He knows I've got something to do with those two ships, Arthur thought, the shivers coming back. With his sorcery, he's seen the connections. I'm marked by his red hand, and he's looking for me. I'll never get away. I'll never... Stop! said Arthur, stamping his good foot. His own mind was getting out of control. Stop what, sir? asked Watkingle. Never mind. Arthur forced the little voice of fear in his head to shut up. He was going to strike first, and once he had the will released in the third key, he could sort out Feverfew without any problems. Probably. 
almost for sure. Is Lieutenant Longtail awake? he asked. Captain Longtail, corrected Watkingle. Not his watch, but I could wake him if it's that urgent. No, I guess there's no point waking him. He massaged his temple with his fingers as he saw, often saw his mother doing. Perhaps that would make his headache go away. What's wrong with calling him Lieutenant anyway? The Commodore called him that. He's a lieutenant in the service, but he's the captain of this here ship, so he's always called captain on board except by higher-ranking rats discussing matters not to do with the ship. Understand? Arthur shook his head. He couldn't concentrate on weird details like this. I'll just call him captain all the time to be on the safe side. Suppose I'd better try and get some sleep. I would if you were... You. I would if I were you, sir agreed Watkingle. Always sleep when you can, that's my rule. Now, as the captain has ordered me to keep a sentry on you for your own protection, I might just lie down in this here floor if you've no objection. Be my guest, said Arthur. He lay down on the bunk and there was no chance of him going to sleep, he thought. He had too many ideas floating around in his head and too many nervous fears knotting up in his stomach. All kinds of worries about Leaf, Scamandros, Sunscorch and the crew of the Moth, about insanely driving a submarine into the mouth of a monstrous whale. That's where we're going to leave it for tonight. Halfway through the chapter. Gosh, it's all kicking off, isn't it, hey? Okay, thanks very much for listening and I'll be back tomorrow. Probably be late again, but I'll be back tomorrow. Unless you're here for a bit of waffle. So, yeah. So, I'm um, a mega late home from work tonight. It's now 8 o'clock. We had the call today. Those in the UK know about the call in the schools. Uh, so, if you're not in the UK, every, like, every, every good few years, schools get inspected. And, yeah, it's a bit of a, bit of a big deal. And, like, for the last 20 years, I've done it in the role of class teacher. But now that I've had my promotion, I've got to do it in the role of deputy head teacher. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a very different beast for me this time. It's like going around just making sure everybody else is okay, making sure everything is tight. We've crossed all the lowercase t's and dotted all of the lowercase j's. Uh, it's from Wayne's World. Have you ever seen Wayne's World? Uh, so, yeah. It's a big deal. So that's going to be for two days. So I probably won't sleep very much tonight. A little bit nerve-wracking. But I'll... Um, so I'll go, I'm going to go to work at the crack of dawn tomorrow. And then uh, stay till late again tomorrow night. And then the same on Wednesday, and then it'll be all over with. And we'll get their judgment. They, at the end of the two days, they make a judgment of the school. And that's that's the thing, you see, that lots of teachers, myself included, don't really agree on. Schools, of course they have to cater for... Um, I'm getting a bit political now. All right, excuse me for a moment. But, um, yeah, for schools, of course they have to cater for their, for their cohorts, the children that go to the schools. Of course they do. So not all schools are going to be the same, are they? The children at the school I work at are different to the children at a school down the road. They just are, aren't they? No children are the same. No child is the same. But with this whole checklist thing, they try and put you into a little box that they say is good or that they say requires an improvement or that they say is outstanding. So, um... Yeah, it's, but I guess it's just our job to convince them and show them why we do what we do and that what we do is good. So, yeah, that's the battle I've got for the next couple of days. But like I said, tomorrow night I'll still make sure that I'll try and get here. All right, if I'm not here like I wasn't here last night, uh, j sometimes life just happens and I'm really, really sorry about that. You know I love to upload daily and you know if I could upload twice daily I would. I did for a little while over Christmas last year. <laughs> so, um, yeah, if I'm not here, you know I'll come back, all right? But I'm going to try my hardest. I'm going to talk about this, actually. When I have my interview tomorrow, I'm going to talk about the YouTube channel and say about reading stories. So, yeah, 
there you go. That's what I'm up to at the moment. So, brilliant. Uh, last night, which was Sunday night for me, I didn't come along because Blake FaceTimed just as I was about to come up and put the old put the old headphones of doom on. He FaceTimed. So yes, yeah, so I had a good old long chat with Blake last night. That was nice. He seems to be doing really, really well. So um, yeah, that was, that was lovely to see him and to hear from him. We just had a giggle really together. So um, yeah, that was good. Right, I'm signing off. I'm going to go and have some tea time and I'm going to have a cup of tea, a shower and get myself to bed to not sleep. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Wish me luck. Bye.